Because 4chan historically has been a site for great irreverence. So they had had campaigns to um, troll. And by trolling, let me say specifically what I mean. Trolling is, it's not just, uh, you know, you, you know, you have a Twitter account and I say, at Jordan Peterson, you're a jerk, F off. That's not trolling. That's just being obnoxious. Trolling, I, I, I regard the first troll as Andy Kaufman, the, the mm -hmm. comedian, where what by your performance, you're turning a third party by exploiting their weaknesses into an unwitting performer on their own. For example, there was a great wrestler, uh, to bring it back to wrestling, called the Honky Tonk Man from the 80s. And his shtick was he was an Elvis impersonator, right? And when they interviewed him, he would say, oh, no, Elvis stole my act. Now, Elvis had been dead for 15 years at that time. It, it, it makes no sense whatsoever, but this would get the audience really enraged and, and they'd flip out. So when you are calmly causing someone else to have an extreme reaction, and in this case, and, and good trolling, he's exploiting, exploiting their innocence and naivete. I mean, they're taking what he's saying at face value, even though it's a complete absurdity, and what follows suit, you know, on some case can be put in their lap. So they used to, what, what 4chan would go, would, would be known for is, you know, for example, you had a, uh, a Mountain Dew, right? And they had named the next flavor of Mountain Dew. It's just a corporate mechanism. I talk about this in the book. It's a corporate mechanism to sell, you know, your sugary soft drink. Uh, what name should we call it? And they basically got enough people together. And this is kind of like rent seeking, right? If you have an organized um, uh, goal seeking minority as opposed to an indifferent majority, that organized goal seeking minority is going to be able to punch very much above its weight in terms of getting the, the achievements it wants. How many people are caring about this Mountain Dew poll? Very, very few other than the trolls. So they got the, the number one result to be Hitler did nothing wrong, right? Now, they're not Nazis. They're not, they don't think the Holocaust is, is something that is, didn't happen or is bad. They're putting now this Mountain Dew who's trying to use this fun to sell you this poisonous sugary garbage. Now the corporation is in position. Are they gonna follow through with this poll or are they going to pull it? Whatever they choose, they have been forced into making a choice that they themselves would not have wanted because you have someone in a meeting trying to, hey, this is going to be fun for the kids. And they ended up pulling uh, the poll because they're like, okay, the internet won. So to go from that and this kind of extreme um, distrust, if not contempt, for corporate irreverence and corporate humor and corporate fun to have basically, can I curse? On this? You can do whatever you want. Okay. Well, not everything. So <laughs> to have uh, uh, someone who was basically a shit poster on Twitter running for president, uh, who was just there in these debates, insulting these politicians to their face in often very below the belt terms, that was that ethos brought to life because no one could have imagined in decades that you would have a presidential contender who's looking at a sitting senator in the face, who's, who's doing well in the polls and telling that senator, I've never made fun of your looks and there's plenty of material there. Believe me, that much I can tell you. You know, this is something that was completely unprecedented and new. And we've been taught for decades um, that, you know, politics should be about respect. It's These are tough choices. These are people's lives. That's all very true. But there's this very new left from the late 60s perspective idea that uh, these kind of powerful entities use respect and decorum and decency as a mechanism to stifle dissent and to basically make their uh, victory a fait accompli. And if you kind of mess that up and force them to show their hand that these are not kind, caring people who care about your grandma and your neighborhood. These are power hungry sociopaths who will smile at your face and do whatever they need to when the lights are off. That I think uh, was something that was very useful in terms of exposing our politics for what they are. So it's, it struck me over the last decade or so that the alignment of comedic satire with right wing philosophy or, or political philosophy or views was something that was completely also completely unprecedented. I'd, I thought, well, all of a sudden the right wing are the jesters, or at least among the right wing are these jesters. And I really didn't know what to make of that. I mean, you seem to regard it in your book, The New Right, you, you seem to regard it as um, a, a kind of right wing anarchic rebellion against, but it's a strange, it's strange what they're against, because on the one hand, there's the corporate voice, let's say, that characterizes the media. And on the other hand, there's the left wing progressives. And you, you can't really put them in the same camp all that easily. 
Well, hopefully we will be putting them in the same camp. Um, but they are in the same camp because one of my quotes is conservatism is progressivism driving the speed limit. So mm -hmm. much of conservatism, Buckley got his start, William F. Buckley, who's the, I think the big villain of the book, got his start complaining how terrible things are and how mistreated he was at Yale. The new right perspective isn't complaining about how things are at Yale. It's let's send tanks, let's send tanks to Harvard, Harvard Yard and raise it to the ground. So these are two different approaches. And much of conservatism for decades, this besides being inherently humorless, uh, which is a personality thing, which is perfectly fine if, if that's your thing, it has been about a reaction. So the left would have some idea of the moment we need to do this and that. The right would just dig in their heels and get dragged along. And it's a ratchet effect constantly moving us toward a more and more progressive society. The National Review's slogan was standing athwart history yelling stop. And then at a certain point, people realized, how about instead of yelling, we actually stop it? How about we actually try to put a wrench into these gears? How about we try to, you know, uh, metaphorically tar and feather some of these people instead of just complaining that it's not fair? Let's be aggressive and let's take the fight to them. Okay, and you see an ad, you clearly see an ad.